we have gone live in all the places and today we are talking about 10 questions to ask yourself before hiring a Squarespace web designer. And of course, I'm always going to be an advocate for Squarespace. I have a lot of reasons for that. I wrote a whole blog post about it. I will link it somewhere below in the comments. Um, if you're on Instagram or you're watching this someplace else, I will have a link somewhere around the video saying like, here's why I love Squarespace and recommend it for entrepreneurs. But um, Squarespace is my go-to platform. I love it, love it, love it. And um, when you're interested in pivoting to Squarespace or just getting started completely fresh from Squarespace, there are 10 questions that I recommend people kind of process through and ask themselves before starting a hiring process and interviewing process to try to find the right project um, web designer or maybe brand coach for them. Um, I'm also going to be doing kind of a mini series. To, today is the first of the mini series, which is questions to ask yourself before hiring a web designer. Um, part two is questions to ask your designer to determine if they're the right fit for the project. And number three is what's the difference between a web designer and a brand coach? Which one do I need? So today, let's start with these questions. This is going to give you a foundation to start working from, and it's going to help you figure out kind of what you need for the other pieces as well. So what is your timeline? The first thing I ask my potential clients when I get on the phone with them is like, hey, tell me about what it is that you're doing and what's your timeline for getting a website up and running? Do you have any particular events or launches um, in the next three months, six months, one year that you really need to have this be a well-oiled machine for? Um, and that's really important because I take about six weeks, depending, um, unless it's a much larger project, um, like an apparel line or something like that, and we're designing apparel in addition to the project, uh, the website project, you know, it takes about six weeks to build a website start to finish um, on the Squarespace, including building on brand identity, all of these pieces, um, and that's working with me. Other designers have different timelines and timeframes, but I have gotten myself down to a workflow and system that really works well if clients are responsive. So um, it's about two weeks for prep work, about two weeks, maybe four weeks for the build out process. There's some dialogue in there. And then about two weeks um, in the post launch or maybe pre launch phase where you're getting all of your social promos together and saying, like, hey, we're live or hey, we have this new product. Um, and so that's about six to eight weeks, roughly. Um, and then, then the, the Squarespace website is up. So if you know you have something that you want to launch in three months, um, it might be good to know that it takes about six to eight weeks for an awesome, beautiful, you know, non-glitchy website to be up and running. Can you make one faster than that? Absolutely. Depending on if you have all of the pieces together, depending on the designer, depending on their pricing, their time frame, if they have a rush fee, um, there's all different things that come with that. But primarily, we're just asking ourselves, what is my timeline? When would I like to have a rebrand or a refresh of my website or maybe a brand new website? up and running. Question number two is, is your brand identity already established? This is something that's really important because a brand identity is the foundation of all great websites. And again, there is a difference between having a logo and a built out brand identity. A logo is not your brand. A logo is an element of your brand. It's a visual representation that at a glance, it's recognizable. Um, somebody's going to say, oh, I recognize that logo because that's Brittany and those are her colors. Um, but that, then we start talking about brand identity, which is your colors, your specific fonts or texts, um, your taglines, your messaging, your voice, maybe you're sassy and sarcastic. Maybe you're very, um, you know, soul centered and just like your words just drip with all kinds of gravity and meaning, right? So people will recognize your copy. They'll recognize maybe it's your style of brand photos or your style of clothing. That is the brand identity that overall becomes your brand and your logo is that representation of that. I have another web, uh, blog post on the difference between a brand identity versus a logo and which one you actually need. So um, the next question that you're going to want to ask yourself is what's the number one goal of my website? So when a client lands on your website, you have about like three seconds to have them buy in or they're gonna click off and look at something else. So the first thing that they need to see 
is the thing that you want them to have interest in? Like, what's your primary offering? What is the primary action that you want someone to take? Do you want them to get on your email list? Do you want them to buy a product? Do you want them to watch a video and buy into your mission and values? What is the thing that you want people to do first? That's something that we need to consider top of mind. Number four, what is your value proposition statement? So value proposition statement sounds very high and elevated, but really it says like, who are you? What do you do and why do you do it? Like, what is your positioning? Who are you serving? How do you serve them? So a way that I frame this is I am a brand and business coach. I help online entrepreneurs create captivating and compelling brands. Okay. And so it's very clear who I help. I don't just help brick and mortar like stores. I help people in the online space. I'm familiar with more online systems, social media, websites. So the online sphere has its own, you know, culture and ins and outs that people need to understand that are different from brick and mortar businesses. Um, so for me, I help them create a captivating brand, not just a brand, but one that captivates, one that's story driven, one that's personal. Um, I work with a lot of coaches and authors and individual entrepreneurs like wedding photographers, people who have a personal element of their brand that they're developing. And so when you're clear about who you help, like I'm not helping huge corporate um, companies, right? develop their branding that would require an agency. I am a single person running a business with a small team. And so I like the smaller individual intimate development of a brand that looks a little bit different than corporate development. So um, number five, um, what is your domain? So your domain is that little URL address at the top of a website and it's mine is my name, BrittanyRossi.com. Um, yours might be t-shirtsforsale.com, right? So whatever it is that your domain, you want it to be, um, make sure that you reserve that. You can go onto Squarespace and look and see if a URL is available. There's also new um, kind of, instead of .com at the end, there's like .tv or .church or .nonprofit or .business, .lifestyle, .whatever. Um, so there's a little bit more room to be flexible and find your name and be a little bit clever with it. However, I would encourage you to be careful. My, my stance is always to be clear, not clever. So if it's too clever or it's hard to remember or it's super duper long, I would pivot and try to find an alternative. But making sure that you have a domain name that represents you or your company well is also really important before you go and start building out your website. Um, you can also go over and look to see if um, a certain name is available with the trademark electronic search system or USPTO.gov. It's the United States Trade and Patent Office. And that's for if you're in the United States, but um, the trademark electronic search system is also a way to search for names for ideas about your company so that you can go and look for a URL and make sure that it's available there. The next thing you wanna think about, and this is number six, I know we're moving a little bit fast, but um, what are some other accounts that you might need to set up and integrate with your website? One of the reasons why I absolutely adore Squarespace and I don't need to get paid. There's like no affiliate link. <laughs> like I just love Squarespace. Um, it integrates super well with a lot of different softwares and platforms. It's pretty seamless. There, I've rarely had um, any hiccups with integrating other platforms. So are you using MailChimp for your email marketing, for your are you using Kartra, which is more like Infusionsoft, like a bigger system for client relationship management? Are you using Shopify? Are you selling physical products? Um, Shopify has different features than Squarespace, so some people like to integrate Shopify and Squarespace together. Acuity scheduling, man, if you've ever booked a call with me, you've been an experiencer or used, had a user experience with Acuity scheduling. I love it, man, it saves me so much time because it automatically sends a Zoom link. Um, everything is automated with that. HoneyBook, I in take inquiries and information through my HoneyBook system, which is integrated into Squarespace, and it automatically populates them as a new, new client, new project, and I can continue maintaining that relationship through HoneyBook once they've landed on Squarespace. Printful is another one that I've used with Squarespace um, that's for apparel lines. If you're interested in creating um, backpacks or shirts or hats that are custom made, custom designed, and you wanna sell them, white label, so it's like your design, um, Printful is a way to kind of drop ship that and it integrates as well. So depending on your industry, depending on 
your business, there's all different kinds of things that you're going to want to think about of what, what is it that I need my website to do? Do I want to receive the order and manually create my product and then ship it out? Or do I want to have my website send that information to somebody else who does the work for me and I just do the marketing, right? So what is it that you need your website to do and what other accounts will you need? Is it Instagram? Is it um, Twitter? Do you, is, are those the places where you primarily hang out? Make a list and then when you are ready to go to web designer, you can say, these are the things that I need my website to integrate with. These are my primary objectives. Number seven, how many pages do you need on your website? Depending on how you organize your information, which is so, so very important, and working with a web designer is really gonna help you streamline your information so that it's clear, you know, you end up not needing a whole lot of pages on your website if you're smart about it and if you really understand user interface and user experience. Some people try to get too clever with their websites and it's not intuitive for a visitor to navigate where they want to go. And it's very frustrating for users on the other end. And so I, again, choose clear over clever. Um, you can be clever in your copy, you can be clever in your photography, but be clear and make it intuitive and super easy on how you lay out your website and how many pages you're gonna need for that information. Um, so depending on your style, depending on your industry, that's gonna inform a lot of how your website is laid out and how many pages that you need. But you can write down on a cocktail napkin, like we need a t-shirts page, we need an events page, we need a contact page, we need an about page, um, we need a home page, we need a sales page, all of the different pages with the type of content that you're gonna need on it, maybe a landing page, uh, a cover page. There's different things, um, depending on what it is that you're offering, um, you know, ask the web designer, how many pages is this going to be? This is what I need. This is what I think I need. What do you think? Um, and they're gonna be able to give you a lot of insight on how to frame your information. Number eight, and this is a tricky one that often comes up with clients because they think a lot of times if I hire a web designer, they're gonna write all of the words on my website for me. Oftentimes, a web designer's skill sets and strengths lie in the laying out of information, the structure, the coding, um, you know, navigation, not necessarily in writing your words. And so copy is just a fancy name for the words on your website, sales copy, web copy. Um, but you will need to set aside some time to write out your about page. You'll need to set aside some time to write down your sales page or the information that you want on your homepage. They will help you organize that information, but you'll need to have that information ready and available for them for each page. And so if writing is also something that is not your strength, a lot of web designers will have a copywriter that they recommend and refer out, or you can find a copywriter who you identify with well and you like their style of writing, but you are the one that knows your business best and you know your products, your services, your offerings. So oftentimes the client themselves will write their own copy. And if you need to, and you want it to be a little more clever or have somebody polish your, your words, you can also work with a copywriter. Some designers offer this, I do not. Um, I always feel like the person who owns the business, they're gonna know their stuff best. I can make recommendations um, and share thoughts, but I outsource the copy or I hand it off to the client themselves to do. And so um, number nine, is photos. Do you have on-brand personal, professional photos? Depending on your industry, professional might even be like fun or silly or um, maybe even rebellious, right? Or irreverent or um, depending on what your brand is, anything that is photo related or image related, is it on brand with what it is that you're doing, right? So do you have your photos? Do you um, know where it is that you're wanting to use those photos. I want to use this on my about page. I want to use this, this one with me pointing and looking for my opt-in. Um, you know, there's, photos are very compelling, right? Video even more so. So if you don't want to do a personal photo shoot and you don't necessarily have a personal brand, stock photos is another great um, source. So a lot of times a designer will work with you 
on finding stock photos, but you can also find stock photos yourself and say, I really like this look, I like this style, can we use these or find something similar to it? There's a lot of free stock photography out there today, but if you really are looking for something curated and very, very on point, sometimes it's worth paying $30 for a bundle of stock photography for your website that you can also repurpose for your social media. Very, very easy and good investment for your brand. And number 10, and this is something that I think a lot of people, almost all of my clients are surprised by because they're coming to somebody to outsource work, but they don't realize that they also have work to do. This is a collaborative experience. Um, just like with coaching, just like with teaching, just like with anything else, if you are wanting to get a certain result, you're going to get in out of it what you put into it. And so you can't just hire a designer and then like jet off to Europe somewhere and then come back and expect your website to be done. There's a lot of dialogue that happens, at least between me and my clients, and we get really good results. Um, but when you're collaborating and you're, you're saying, this is what I recommend as an expert, how does this land on you? Does this make sense for your audience? I'm leaning on your expertise in your industry. I'm good at what I do and you are good at what you do. And so web designers are leaning on you to say, hey, I may not know the car industry very well. I may not know the real estate industry very well. I may not know this artsy fartsy industry very well, but you, like the designer will know how to organize information in a way that is intuitive and beautiful. So just because you are not the one designing the website doesn't mean that you don't have work to do. You don't have feedback to give. Um, make sure, um, make sure that you are fully present and are ready to do the thinking work that's required to build a beautiful and functional website. So those are my 10 questions that I recommend people ask themselves. Are they ready to do the work? Um, do you have your photos, whether they're stock photos or personal branded photos ready? Do you have website copy written? Is it funny? Do you have your voice nailed down? Um, how many pages do you think that you're going to need? Four to five? Do you need more because you have a bigger company and you're rebranding? Um, do you need other accounts to be integrated and set up? Are you using Infusionsoft or Acuity Scheduling or Printful or MailChimp or something like that? Um, do you have a domain name already reserved? Um, do you have clarity around your value proposition statement, meaning, you know, who you, um, who you serve and how you serve them and the benefits that people get from working with you. Do you know what the number one goal of your website is? What is, what is the goal? Are you trying to grow your list? Are you trying to book clients? Are you trying to sell product? Are you trying to book services? Are you trying to raise awareness? What is the goal of your website? Um, and do you have your brand identity already established? And what is your timeline? So that is the recap of the 10 things you need to ask yourself before hiring a Squarespace web designer. And of course, I'm throwing Squarespace in there because I love it. It's so good. That's what I work on for all of my clients. Um, and so if you have any questions about that, questions that um, you have about Squarespace or working with a web designer, please drop them below. I love answering these questions. These are just some things that have come up um, when I've been talking with clients and they didn't realize, oh, six weeks, I thought this was like a two week project thing. Well, it could be depending on the designer you work with and it could also impact the quality of website that you have. So um, for me, it takes about six weeks, but being clear on what your timeline is, is gonna help you make quick decisions and you know, responsible and kind decisions when you're working with someone, you're not stringing them along. You know, People care in, in different industries and circles about how others treat them. Um, within the online space. And so when you know exactly what you need and you're able to come to the table with that information, you're going to have a much better experience and much more clarity if somebody's going to be the right fit for you and your business and your clients. Does that make sense what I'm sharing? Please drop a yes. Let me know or drop some hearts or something so I know that you guys are picking up what I'm putting down. I um, th This is stuff that I've discovered along the way in my own business journey. I hope that you find it beneficial and helpful. Again, I'm gonna be covering questions to ask a designer or how to figure out if a designer is a good fit for your project next week, next Tuesday, live here on Instagram, as well as in the Legacy Driven Entrepreneur community on Facebook. And the week after that, we're gonna be talking about the difference between a graphic designer um, or a web designer versus a brand coach. And both are really important. Um, not all 
graphic designers are created equal. Not all brand coaches or brand strategists are created equal, depending on um, some people frame themselves as brand strategists, some people frame themselves as brand coaches. Both are very important. And there might be some overlap. So we're going to talk about like, what do I need and what do they do and what's the difference? Because the, I found that there's a lot of confusion on the client end about what it is that we in our industry do. So hopefully that will bring clarity to you. Let me know if one of those sounds helpful to you or exciting to you to learn more about, and we can flip flop which one we present first. There's no particular order there. So let me know uh, which one you'd like to hear about first. If you do feel like you are ready to move forward with a web design or need some help around the brand identity development, you can feel free to book yourself a free consultation. A lot of designers and brand coaches offer free consultations to figure out if you are a good fit for them and if you, we are good fits for you. And so I'm going to drop that link in the comments as well. And you, if you are having any other questions about your web design or your brand identity, go ahead and book one of those calls with me. I would love to chat with you about it. Um, and so go ahead and book that. It's about 20 minutes long and um, I look forward to connecting with you guys. That's it for today. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.